You ever feel like something's missing? Just should be there, but is not. It's just a weird feeling, right? And I'm not talking about bacon because bacon makes everything better, but it's not missing. Bacon's right here. No. Today we're going to talk about your walk snail OSD in your DVR recordings. Hey everybody, I'm Bacon Ninja, and if you're running walk snail, I bet you've seen it do this. It's really weird. You record your DVR. Perfect. That's all great. But there's no OSD overlay. But you know the OSD is working because it's in the goggles. But when you look at the DVR, there's no OSD overlay. It just feels like it's missing. And then when you go to look at the SD card, you see something like this. And that is your MP4 files for your video, but also these .OSD and .SRT files. Now, .SRT files, that's nothing new. DJI, the old DJI, not DJI 03, that's a totally different scenario, use the SRT files. What the SRT file is, is a little subtitles file that gives you all the info from the goggles like the latency and the bat voltage in this one little weird string that nobody really wants to look at. Instead, they want to see your OSD because as a pilot, you were looking at your OSD and when you show me your DVR, I want to see what you're seeing. Maybe there's some throttle percentage or pack voltage or I don't know what else you're doing on there. Maybe you have a really stupid craft name that you just want people to see every time they're watching your DVR footage, more power to you. That's not on there because it is in the .osd file. But what in the hell do you do with the .osd file to get this working? Well, today I'm going to show you how to merge that .osd file and the .srt if you're really feeling frisky into your DVR footage so that you can have one file with the DVR footage and overlay the OSD on top. And if you want the little subtitle thing, I'll show you what that does too. That's not really required, but that way, the everything comes out in your footage feeling can be you, and you won't feel like you're missing things. It won't be too big of a deal. But a couple of caveats here. There are a couple things you need to do on the goggle side to make sure these files get recorded to the SD card. So I'm gonna take you through that. And before you ask, yeah, you can basically do this on any computer. I'm gonna do this on a Windows machine. It can be done on Mac, maybe. I'll show you the GitHub. I haven't tried it, but if you try it, let me know. And I think there's also a side project to do some of this in Linux, but if you're doing that, you probably don't need me to show you how to do this because bro, you be Linux and let's do it in Windows instead because I bet the majority of you are there. And as far as PC specs, you can do this with basically any processor. Just beware that it does take a ridiculously long time if you don't have a very powerful PC. So yeah, your two minute DVR footage might take you 15 minutes to export with an OSD overlay. Just beware of that. Anyway, let's jump into how to set it up on the VRX side so that you have all the settings in place to get the files on the SD card in the first place. And with your avatar system powered up, you wanna go into the menu and then you wanna go down into the settings to display and make sure you have your custom OSD set to BTFL if you're doing Betaflight or there's some other options in here if you're doing other things, but I'm using Betaflight, so I'm gonna leave that alone. And then we just wanna double check our record settings that were set to what we expect for the recording frame rate and resolution as well as the devices that we wanna do when we take off. And you might as well just give yourself a format of the SD card to make sure everything's good. And the next thing to double check is that you're on modern firmware. And for this, I am running version 22.13.16. I just looked and double checked. That's what I'm running right now in the normal release branch. I'm not doing anything funny with beta testing or any of that. I'm just flying the walk snail to figure out if I like it right now. So just make sure you've updated your firmware and that you've got all the stuff set up to show the OSD in your goggles. You can move the OSD around in there if you're using some new features of Betaflight 4.4, like the HD OSD options. You can do some of that stuff too to make sure it's all centered up. But basically at this point, you should be seeing your OSD in your goggles if you have everything set up correctly on your avatar VRX side and in the Betaflight configuration. You have set it to record on the SD card at minimum or both if you're feeling, again, pretty frisky because you might be frisky from earlier when you could have been frisky and you're running semi-modern firmware, which when you're watching this video, we may be well past this version of firmware. That is perfectly fine. Hopefully they've fixed this and you don't need this video anymore because this is an extraordinary pain in the butt to get OSD on top of your footage. Trust me, it is. Now that we have all that together, just go fly the thing, go fly it, have fun. Bring your SD card back and pop it into your computer. And you should see the files that I talked about earlier, a bunch of MP4 files, 
that's all what we expect, but then also .osds and .srt files. Now we're gonna merge those onto the thing. So let's head over to GitHub and pick up some software to do this. And the software we'll be using is WSOSD Pi, and it's made by these two lovely people here whose names I can't pronounce. Because consonants and vowels should not be in that order in a human being's name, it's most likely that you're not from the United States based on the name, and if you are, you didn't originate from here, and that is wonderful. I applaud you on your diversity, but I cannot pronounce your names, and I'm not gonna dare try to do it on camera and butcher my, I don't know, I don't have a reputation, but what, whatever it is, I'm just not gonna butcher the rest of it. Whatever minimal amount there is left, I'm gonna hang on to. But this is the software we're gonna download, so let's download this. And to do that, you'll wanna go here to releases, where they're on version 0 0.8 beta, we're gonna click that, we're gonna scroll you on down, and we're gonna pick up the Windows zip here. Now, if you're on other operating systems, there is source code there, and if you feel like compiling it, you can totally do that if you feel like you want to. Or there's some other projects that are just Linux and Debian Mac OS based that are not the software I'm gonna be showing you today, but they do exist, and they are things you can do if you would like to do them and type them all out in command prompt, and you can feel like a hacker while you do it. But now that we've downloaded that, it'll be a zip file that you downloaded. So we just want to extract that zip file to somewhere handy, wherever you want to put it. In my case, I'm just keeping it in my downloads folder. You do you though. You put it where you put your stuff. Just extract the folder, and then we're going to go into that folder and start opening up the fun stuff. And here's my folder full of stuff we just downloaded. There's a bunch of things in here, but the one that's really important is this, the WSOSD gin. And then we're gonna get to what these little PNG weird files and fonts are here in a minute. This FFmpeg is just a component it uses, but let's go ahead and execute this. It's gonna pop up a command prompt, which is gonna feel a little funny. I'm not gonna lie, the fact that it pops up a command prompt, but don't worry, because right after that, it's gonna pop up a normal human being interface where you don't have to feel like the hacker I talked about earlier to get anything done. It's gonna let us do all this and it's gonna let us do most of this with drag and drops, but I'm gonna take you through all the features first. I'm gonna load up my stuff and show you how it works. And then I'm gonna show you where you can watch the output because again, it's a little bit funny where it puts things. But anyway, my GUI, my GUI, my GUI bacon, ugh, that's just disgusting, has just opened. So let's head back to that. And would you look at this GUI right here. Now it wants us to select the video path and all this other junk. In order to do that, we're gonna to go to our DVR footage and we're just gonna select all three files from one of the recordings we have. So that is the main MP4, the OSD and the SRT. And we're just gonna drop these over here. You'll see how it loads them all up, but it doesn't do anything for the font. It says selected font path still. And that's where those PNG files come into that we saw in the installation directory. So we're gonna go dig around in those. And I'm gonna show you the one that works for my avatar system. And I'll show you one that doesn't work so you know what it looks like when it has a problem with the font. And I believe there are ways to make your own or find more or load the custom fonts that you would normally load in your Walksnail VTX, VRX, not the VTX, into this so you can show your custom fonts too, but I'm just gonna use the default ones because they already exist, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right and how to do it wrong and know when it is wrong. So in the folder we unzipped, there is this user BF24 file. That sounds good, it must mean beta flight. I like the number 24, let's dump it over here. Well, font doesn't match video resolution. Please select HD font. That's because this 24 indicates that this is a standard definition font. What we want is this one that says 36 over here. So I'm gonna drag that one instead. It says recognized HD font and everything's good. And you can see over here, we have our font laid out in the place where our OSD is. So now you can see your OSD on top of your video. Peachy, that's exactly what we're after. Now there are some sliders here that'll let you scale the OSD or move it left and right if it wasn't quite right on there. And then there's also some stuff for the SRT file. So let me show you those scalers. I like to just leave mine alone and let it be exactly like it is how I set it up in my goggles, which is basically where it just dumps it onto by default. But you know, again, you do you because you can do you all day and no one will say anything. Well, it depends on how many other people are around you. Anyway, let's get this OSD on here. Let me move it around. So you have a left offset that will basically just move it one direction or the other. Again, I'm going to put mine at zero if I can find it. Oh gosh, I don't know if I can find it. Oh no, oh no, I can't find it. Anyway, same thing for the offset top and the zoom will let you zoom the OSD in or out. 
which you can see what that does. That's not really super useful unless you have something weird going on. If you click this box here, include SRT data, you see it brings up the SRT string from the subtitles file that has all that good information. You can also hide sensitive OSD values like GPS and home distance if you want to. And if you have an NVIDIA card, you can use this hardware acceleration option to make this go a little bit quicker. I never run GPS, so I don't have to worry about hiding those things, but I do like to put the little SRT at the bottom because it's nice to know how many megabits the video quality had while it's going on. And if you have distance from home and things, you can kind of relate the megabits of your SRT file to what's in your OSD. So let's just use one more step to get this going. And then I'm gonna show you how you can watch this thing like paint dry, make your video in the most boring way possible. But just remember, in the end, it's worth it because your OSD is now pasted on your DVR footage. And that's because at the bottom, we have a couple options. We can generate PNG sequence, which is essentially useless. I'll explain that in a second. Or we could render the video with OSD, which sounds like exactly what we want to do. That's because it is. And if you're feeling extra, extra frisky, that's level three frisky, you can upscale the video to 1440p right here while you're at it. I'm not gonna do it because it takes longer. Let's just render video with OSD. It's gonna process the frames here, and that's gonna take a while. And that's the PNG sequence that it's processing. It's gonna take a while. What it's actually doing is breaking your OSD down and making clear backgrounded pictures of it that it's gonna slap on top of these frames. That's essentially what it's doing here. So it's taking that OSD file, it's breaking it into a bunch of pictures, it's dumping it in a folder in the same place that your DVR footage is that you loaded. So hopefully there's enough room there for all these PNGs. It's not a massive amount of space, but it does make them and it does actually leave them there when you're done. If for some reason you wanted one of those frames later, you just felt like, hey, I wanna show this one frame where I did one thing, my, my OSD did something funny, you can just use it if you want. Not a big deal. In fact, I used one in the thumbnail, probably. I haven't made the thumbnail yet. So if it's not there, don't blame me. But if it is there, now you know how it happened because of these PNG sequences. But basically, unless you're doing something advanced with your video editing software, the PNG sequence is useless. It's just necessary for this thing to do what it does. So once this finishes processing, we're gonna go back to the yieldy command prompt where you can watch the numbers rise with almost no meaning and no sense of when it will be done. And now we see it pop up with this check console log for status. That's cryptic. And what it actually means is just this thing that it left over here, the command prompt window. You can see it's building our video down here. It's on frame 45, doing 2.8 frames per second, really blazing through this thing at a bit rate of, I don't know, this, sure, that. And it's doing 1080p because that's what the video was. So now you can just watch that frame number slowly climb until it's finished. Because an NVIDIA card or other high-end graphics cards, when we render videos like this, it will process frames at levels of like hundreds a second. This one processes them at like five a second with my CPU. Just remember that when you're doing this. If you don't have a discrete graphics card, this is gonna take forever. And if you do have a discrete graphics card, check that little hardware acceleration box because then it will try to use it. Although it's an experimental feature, it may or may not work. You may get some funny things. It's better than waiting forever for this to finish with your CPU if you can utilize it. If not, just use your CPU, wait forever, and like, I don't know, go cook some bacon or something and make a sandwich. Do you like your bacon sandwiches with mayonnaise? Because I do. Just some bacon, mayonnaise, and white bread. That's the way to do it. It's like a BLT without all the LT, but plus the M. That's how I roll. Anyway, this is gonna take a while. So settle in, here we are. And through the magic of editing, it's probably done now. Oh, what do you know? It is finished. That's convenient. I didn't just clip that together to save myself a bunch of time. Now let me show, show you where it dumped the thing so that you can finally utilize the thing you've been waiting on for like 20 minutes now. Yeah, that's, that's seriously how long this takes. And you can see the folder that it made with all of my PNG images here that loaded. That's all my OSD elements that it built out. And then you see these ones that say generated OSD. That one's the one that I just did a minute ago, but here's another one I did earlier. The final file will have underscore generated underscore OSD on it. And that's what you're looking for. That's the one ready to go. And that's all there is to it. 
It's mostly a waiting game, honestly, just waiting for this thing to be done. Just make sure that you bring all the files off your SD card, not just the MP4s, and you select the same files worth of MP4, OSD, and SRT, all with the same number when you load this thing in, and do expect it to take forever because by golly, it will take forever as if you had all the time in the world to wait for this. And maybe someday we'll see it happen. Now, this is a limitation of more than just the avatar system. When you get right down to it, the chipset that they're using on the avatar system is very similar, no matter what other people say, to the DJI V1 or V2 system, not the O3 system, the V2 system. It's a very similar chipset, mostly because it was purchased from the same manufacturer under a different name. Anyway, it's, the, it's different firmware, but the limitation's the same, and that chipset never had enough power to write the OSD on top of the DVR as it was being done. It could just write what the goggles were getting from the VTX. It couldn't add a second stream to inject the OSD data, even though it was putting it on the screens. Anyway, the limitation exists in more than one place. The Avatar system, as well as the V2 system. So if you're running a Vista or Air Unit and you have the WTF OS on there, you may notice that you see very similar things. You may see SRT files and OSD files, and this process will work for those as well. Just, you know, maybe not perfectly. It's made for Walksnail, but it's essentially the exact same problem for the exact same reason with the exact same solution. So you can try it for that. Now, I did notice in doing this that the OSD is probably about half a second off of reality. It's mistimed by about half a second. It's not too terrible. At least the OSD is there. I can see what my throttle was doing. I can see about how long the flight time was that kind of stuff, it's not that bad. Your results may vary. If you're using hardware acceleration, you may actually have it be perfect. It may just be because the CPU is so friggin' slow at doing this that it had a half second delay in injecting those frames. It's entirely possible. But regardless, you have OSD on your footage now, so go post it all over Facebook. Show people how you fly in your goggles because isn't that what we all do? We all tell each other, this is how I do it, and by golly, how I do it is how you should... No, that's not how you should do it. Just do it how you want to do it. For crying out loud, just do it how you want to do it. And if you want to fly walks down and put the freaking OSD on top of your DVR, then you go put the freaking OSD on top of your DVR now, because you can do it. And that's all I've got for you. Leave me a comment below if you're flying walks now, if you have run into this, if you have wondered what those stinking OSD files were for, and wondered where your OSD was in your DVR footage. Because I know I did, and I'd like to know your opinions below. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions about it, come hang out on my Discord. There's a whole bunch of people over there. Some of them are flying walk snails, some of them have the VRX, some of them have the goggles, and we'll all be happy to talk about it with you. And uh, yeah, give you our real opinions that we can't give you in videos. Over there on the, D the D D D D D D Discord, that thing, I caught a stutter for a second. That's, that's weird. It smells like toast in here. Must have just been a flashback to the BLT. Anyway, I'm done now. That's it. Thank you all for watching. And until next time, stay greasy. And I'll catch you later. Every time I talk about walk snail, I can't help but think. The mechanics of physically walking a snail. What would this, in, what would this entail? Snails are slimy little things, but they do have a shell. Could you, like, super glue a clip on their shell and... Then like put a leash on it and walk them around. Uh, do you have to just worry about salty patches? I mean, like with cats and dogs, you worry about like hot patches in the sun. Do you worry about your snail going over salt? And if it gets, I don't know, if it does something wrong, like uh, does a snail crap in your floor? If it craps in your floor, do you just cook it? Is it only if you're French? I don't know. Please, please help me. I'm so confused.